All right, next up, we should talk about component configurability or component uh, flexibility, something like that, fill in the blank. Uh, it's really cool that we can reuse components, but there will absolutely be cases where we need to tweak them or modify them in some way. So let's figure out what we can do there. To begin, well, let me show you something. If I boot up our server using npx serve, and we open this in the browser, but notice I don't see any assignments here like we did before. And that's because, well, look, we haven't booted up that fake API server. So I'd have to open a new tab and say npx json server on port 3001. And now I can switch back and refresh the page. And you know what? That's a little annoying. So usually my rule is when I have to run multiple commands to run my tests or start my server, I will always put those within a npm script. Here's how. Let's go into package.json and we'll add a new script section. Let's create a new script called start and I want it to run these two commands, npx serve and also npx json server. Okay. So I want our serve command and then also our JSON server. And real quick, notice that I'm using one and symbol. That means I want these commands to run simultaneously. If I used two ands, that would mean let this command complete and then run this, but that's not quite right. I want them to run at the same time. Okay, so let's try it out. npm run and then the name of the script, start. Okay, so now notice it boots up the server and then it runs npx serve. So now if I switch back and refresh, everything's working and I can now get up and running with a single command. Very cool. Okay, next up, I'd like these to be columns. So if I go back to my assignment section, why don't we set a class of flex on the wrapper here, give it a refresh, yeah. But now this is awkwardly placed. So I'm gonna show you how to fix that, but just for now, let's comment it out. Okay, next I'd like a little space between each of these columns and I can use the gap. Uh, maybe we'll do eight and then I'll set a gap of two rims. Perfect. But next notice that the width of our assignment list is contingent upon the number of characters in the assignment. So for example, if I were to tweak this, finish Laracast video for work or whatever, suddenly it gets wider. So why don't we set a hard-coded width on each of the assignments? We'll go into assignment list, and maybe on this section here, I'll set a width of 60, and that is 15 rims. So if my base font size is 16 uh, pixels, then we're looking at a width of about 240 pixels. All right, we switch back, we give it a refresh, and now I think that looks better. So let's figure out a place for this to live, because yeah, if I come back and refresh, it's being added to a third column, which I don't want. I still want it to be placed at the bottom here. So we have a couple choices, right? One option would be, well, let's put it within assignment list. But well, let's just see. I could put it right down here at the bottom and I could import it. So import assignment create like so. But yeah, the issue here, if I come back and give it a refresh, is that of course, well, the, the layout is off. But the main issue is that we're now adding a new assignment input to every single list. And maybe that's what you want. But in our case, actually no. We only wanna show it below the in progress assignment list and nowhere else. Now we could make something like this configurable or what if we did this? Let me undo this. Scroll down to the bottom. And now instead of forcing this component here, why don't we just add a slot? This is our way of saying, okay, if you wanna add anything here from the outside, we'll slot it in right below the UL. Otherwise, we won't do anything. Okay, so let's see. I come back and refresh. That's back to how it was. And now, in our assignments component, I can say for this top one here, I'm gonna slot in anything we want. Let's do hello. And now you'll see on this component only, we've added hello. Okay, so now I can swap this out with our assignment create component. And now we have a way to sort of selectively extend components when and if we need to. So I come back and give it a refresh and there we go, it's at the bottom. Okay, so now I can fix the layout here and that should be pretty easy. In our assignment create component, let's set a class of flex or display of flex. 
give it a refresh, and there we go. Looking pretty good. So yes, slots provide one option for extending your components, and you can create as many named slots as you want. Uh, another option would be to provide toggles of sorts. So for example, maybe uh, some assignment lists can be effectively closed or toggled, uh, but not all of them. So let me show you what I mean. Let's go into assignment list and we'll say, um, hmm, let's wrap this within a div. And then I'll add a button here to close it. Let's see what that looks like. And yeah, but really I want it to be aligned up here on the far right. So on the div, let's set a class of flex and justify between. That'll push this to the far left and this to the far right. There we go. And then let's align everything to the start. So I'll say item start, and that'll push the, the top edges of each side to uh, the top. So now the problem is, I wanna be able to close this list, but maybe the in progress list can never be closed, at least for our use case. And you can imagine maybe later we'll add an archived list. Well, maybe you can close that one and this one, but again, you can never close in progress. So what do we do here? Some assignment lists need to show an X while other assignment lists should not. Well, yes, we could use slots for this, but it might get a little tricky. Uh, instead, this is a good use case for simple flags. I'll show you what I mean. Why don't we say, look, only show this button if this component has been marked as, I don't know, uh, can, can hide or toggleable, whatever you want. Let's keep it simple. If this component has been marked that it can be hidden, then we should show a hide button. Okay, let's scroll down and we're gonna create a new prop called can hide. And that's going to be a Boolean. And why don't we say, by default, you cannot hide it. Okay, so if I come back and refresh, I should no longer see the close buttons. But if we now turn that on like this, right here, can hide, that reads pretty well. Come back, refresh. Now I conditionally display that button if it's turned on. And yeah, that's a basic use of what we call flags. Now, in terms of the name, I think can hide is kind of fun, uh, but it, if it would be something where you would turn it on and off, then that's probably not right. Instead, I would switch to something like toggle, toggleable, or can toggle. Uh, why don't we do can toggle, actually, to be a little more future-proof. Assignment list, can toggle, and then we'll do it right up here as well. So now we wanna say, when you click on this button, so we'll go ahead and set that up. When you click on me, um, yeah, we have a couple options. We could track it locally. So for example, I could have a show property that's set to true. And then when you click on it, we set show to false. And then we could make this entire block contingent upon that property. So only show this section if show is truthy and we have assignments. So I think that would work. That would be one option. I click on it and now I don't display it at all. That would be fine. Another option, if you don't wanna do that for some reason, would be to, again, omit an event. So let me undo what we had before, which, again, I think is fine. But yeah, we might want to instead omit an event that says uh, hide or toggle, something like that. Now, the button doesn't do anything. It just makes an announcement. And in fact, if I open up View DevTools, we go into our events, and let's take care of it. I click on it, and sure enough, we fire an event called toggle. Okay, so now the parent can decide how it wants to deal with that, like this. Let's reformat and then say, when you toggle, maybe we track it at this level, like show completed equals true. Then we can handle it at the parent level, something like maybe we have a show completed property and we make that equal to the opposite of what it currently is. All right, I'm just showing you different options you can consider. Okay, so now, yeah, we could do something like uh, the show is probably appropriate, but we'll do the if like that. Only show this component if show completed is truthy. Come back, refresh, and now we are handling that at the parent level. And that might be useful if there is more to show, like maybe if you have a div here, and yes, it shows the assignment list, but it also shows other things. So if you handle uh, the toggle at this component level, 
yeah, again, you might end up in a weird situation where there's other things that also need to be toggled, but but aren't. So yeah, that would be one way to do this. And you just elevate it like so. And yeah, again, probably vShow is more appropriate here. Yeah, so that would be an option as well. If I had down here, blah, blah, just to show you, now, if I click on the X, it will toggle the assignment list, but also anything else that happens to be wrapped in that parent div. So that would be the use case there. Okay, so now we've reviewed two different ways that we can extend our components, or at least make them a little more flexible. The first option is through the use of slots, and the second option is to add flags to your components. Pretty cool.